the Mothers of Mercy 3.2 Act explained uh, as a proposal to Greg Lansman, Steve Wilson, and other politicians to hold accountable some of the uh, religious zealots like the Westboro Baptist Church who want to impose their philosophies and their wills, even going so far as to shame people at their own funeral, which includes soldiers, as we've seen on national news stories. So I think it's high time for us to hold a mirror up, a lot like you do with an ornery rooster, and start asking some questions. In the United States, we have 331 million people. And of those people, 133 million, roughly, attend church. In the Bible, it talks about a 10% tithe. So if you go by the average wage being $50,000, Take 133 million church bills uh, and multiply it by $5,000, you end up with $664 billion going into our churches. Uh, of that, on the Mothers of Mercy Act, we're asking for accountability by providing receipts uh, to show everyone in the community that you're putting it in a suggested five areas uh, and that amount alone is a hundred and thirty three billion dollars and all we're asking you to do is show the receipts where you put 20 percent of the tithe in things that are out there uh, that can benefit the community here in the state of ohio we have 12 million people. Of those 12 million, 4.6 million attend church. At the average $5,000 tithe, that's $23 billion. In the Mothers of Mercy Accountability Act, we're asking you to show what you've done with $4.6 billion. For one example, uh, and I know that this applies a lot to Italy and Giorgio Maloney, who's one of my favorite correspondents, the Catholic Church takes in five trillion two hundred and thirteen billion one hundred and ninety one million eighty five thousand dollars a year. What we want to do is we want to make these people accountable as a society, if not the government, for depositing at least 20% of God's money into a disaster relief perpetual fund that can be used whenever tragedy strikes a, ge a ge geographical area. Medical research so that we can cure diseases family assistance in areas uh, like the game plan that I have attached in the comments, and rehabilitation, be it uh, rehabilitation for women's abuse shelters, uh, prisons, or drug and alcohol rehab, things to help uh, the so-called sinners uh, overcome their challenges and get back into line with productive uh, citizenship. I would like for people uh, to go and ask at your churches to uh, show the work uh, that's being done with the money. There's nothing wrong with holding your pastors, priests, and preachers accountable and saying, here's the money. Uh, how many people in here work and pay 10%? And it's going to, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be pretty close. And always remember, uh, when you say, well, everybody doesn't pay their tithe, uh, I said $5,000 being an average. Can you imagine 10% of Bill Gates' yearly income? It makes up for all the people that don't pay. So don't let them feed you that market. 
Churches who deposit over $100,000 a year would be the only ones asked to show uh, the 20% deposit uh, return. Because uh, I don't know what the overhead is, but I think $100,000 should be the cutoff. If you get over $100,000, I think you're making money, uh, money that needs to be accounted for anyway. Um, I would do something like the 1040A uh, receipt uh, to show, and I would I would match that against expenses and things like that, because a church is actually uh, uh, part of God's plan and part of God's work. I would make sure, and this is as a government for society, but I would start this in churches for sure. Uh, we don't accept cash because it's too hard to monitor. So. Everybody has a bank card. I would prefer you to make your donations on a bank card. That way I can prove to the naysayers or the skeptics what I did with the money. I would do that as a preacher. I would do that as a business. And I'm hoping that the government does that in general. The What Would Jesus Fund is a fund that is perpetual. Uh, it does gain interest. And it is to be used in, in situations where there's been something like a windstorm that we had here in Dayton or the hurricanes that roll through Florida. Uh, some of the major catastrophes that happen, uh, say in India, when they have an earthquake, we can send money and aid through the Red Cross and FEMA to help uh, because we're all God's children and we're trying to do God's work. The revenue generated by faith-based social causes cannot be used to profit or be invested in banks. I think that our tithes need to go directly to the issues at hand in the world uh, to combat evil, despair, and hopelessness. Sitting in the bank collecting interest is not what God would Payroll taxes for health care could be offset uh, with people who are using less, less coverage uh, and trying to maintain uh, the people who are abusing, not abusing, but uh, using quite a bit the health care. They should have to pay more uh, than the others. And I think that as a government, we need to really take a look at health care. Uh, it's available for everyone. Uh, the sheets below, the game plan will show you uh, the people to contact as far as trying to get your life in order, getting insurance and stuff like that. What we want to do is emphasize uh, for a lot of our parents and children that are in despair, uh, the chance to grow up by providing some things in the Mother Mercy 3.2 as options for the government to look at and of course as a template so they can add to or subtract from uh, just like with any spreadsheet. I don't believe uh, that you should be breeding until you're 25 years old. That's not popular and I know that. But we have a severe population especially amongst the poor who breed faster than people who are educated and people who are occupying their time by going to school and working. Uh, I think that if you insert the IUDs uh, in the arm of the female to discontinue their estrogen cycle, uh, monitored by a doctor, of course, I think that it would save a lot of money for America the state of Ohio, and the child who's still growing uh, can have a better chance at achieving their education, establishing themselves, and creating a better atmosphere for a family than one who is 15 years old and pregnant with their second child. I think that all colleges should offer uh, EFT transfers of tuition payments if we have students who are willing to, uh, in a supervised environment, participate in child care, especially in the inner cities, so 
so that our working parents, especially the single ones, can feel safe that their child is being nurtured and growing amongst adults who care about that child and also at the same time be able to find the time to work. I think this is also something that should be done by churches. I think that churches should be open 24 hours a day. I think that they should have volunteers to help with child care as our struggling young Americans, especially our females, are uh, dependent upon the assistance and people's loving hearts uh, to do God's work, take and nurture their children while they work, and try to establish themselves in society to a point to where they don't need so much assistance. Um, in colleges, I have touched on it quite a bit. I spent a lot of time in college uh, areas, retail management was my position, and uh, I would have no stored alcohol on campus. I think that we need to take the marijuana, the opiate, and the alcohol out of the students' arrangement um, for their daily activities so that they can focus on things like participating in programs of child care, participating in programs of U.S. for Hope, and being more involved and active in our community to try to restore uh, some of the values that we need to restore, especially in the inner city. I think that we need to uh, have special classes and programs geared towards uh, letting young men know uh, that when a woman says no, it means no. I think that we need to have classes and educate young ladies on all the reasons that you should say no. And also, uh, if you feel that you've been treaded upon as our daughters and young mothers, that you feel safe to go to faculty and to report uh, these incidents, no matter how minor, if it bothers you, it needs to at least be discussed. Do not walk around with secrets that are going to bog down your mind and take your focus away from what's important, which is building the best you you can. You only have one opportunity uh, to go to college uh, and learn and grow in your 20s uh, and become a citizen of these United States. So take advantage of it, and we want to make sure that you're filtered so that your mind can be pure and focused on these subjects. The time uh, out budget. That is where church volunteers, and like I said, students, uh, can focus on going around picking up the groceries uh, that are perishable, sometimes they call them near dated. I know in produce, 50% uh, of the uh, produce is able to be thrown away and shouldn't be. It should be taken to jails, homeless shelters, and places where it can be distributed uh, because we don't need food in the rumpy landfills. That needs to be in the bellies of the hungry. Number two, vocational schools or community service credits for training classes in jails for qualified inmates teaching them skills uh, to prepare them for their release so that they can get out here, be involved in the community, pay their taxes, participate being Americans confidently with the new skill set. And I would also focus on parenting. Parenting classes uh, should be available for them to focus on law and family service aspects uh, and assist with the building of the American family. Um, and like I said, you're always going to find more issues with less education and uh, more paperwork. I also would like to discuss the uh, five areas that we're going to focus on as far as the church tithes go. 20% in education. 20% in human services, 20% in rehabilitation, 20% in disaster relief perpetual fund, and with
with those, uh, we can distribute in those five programs and build a better plan for God's money. In Ohio alone, of our 11 million Buckeyes, 4.6 million attend church. That is 4.6 million times the average $5,000 tithe. Uh, and that equates to $23 billion in tithes. $4.6 billion to each of those five programs. Local churches uh, that are possibly attended by you may have 100 members. So if you take the 100 members, and I'm talking about working members, uh, $5,000, that is uh, $500,000 a year, 100 members times $5,000, a half million dollars for small churches to have 100 working adults. If your congregation is like some of the larger congregations, uh, like Benny Hinn, he reported 7.3 million attendees in three services. And the tithes from that would be $36 billion overseas, non-tax, uh, when he lived in Texas. And I think that uh, we can also tie in a lot of this with our immigration issues. And I have plans on that in my YouTube broadcast if you want to take a look at it. The Church of the Latter-day Saints in Dayton has 8,000 members. So at 5,000 a year, that's $40 million a year. Uh, should we be allowed to hold them accountable uh, as non-attendees but members of the community that uh, they make sure to represent our values in our community. Yes, we should. Uh, we should always be able to question uh, whether or not something is being done for the betterment of our children. If we had these kind of revenues uh, accounted for, would we be better off uh, with them investing their money in our banks and investment portfolios or in the education of our children and the other four areas that were discussed. Of course, God's work is not sitting in a bank collecting interest. <clears throat> I believe that there's a responsibility in Ohio, in our communities, and in Washington, D.C. Uh, to sit down and discuss things like faith and ask our communities uh, to always remember the differences. Uh, there are many faiths, but the overall message or the mission statement from any faith is love. It is to care, to treat people the right way, to provide help, uh, just like Jesus did. And I think that if we all keep that in our mind, we can eliminate some of these barriers created by Donald Trump and some of the barriers that are created by people like Westboro Baptist Church and focus on what's important, which is growing our children to be better, happier people than we are. The ALS U.S. for Hope Community Outreach Program is something that I started, uh, and it has a lot of different uh, variables in it, not the least of which is sharing information like I did below in the game plan about shelters, food pantries, transit systems, clothes, human services, uh, COVID and healthcare uh, responses, MRDD, mental health, educating our children with more life skills uh, that they can apply out in life. Uh, because life is rough, we want them all to succeed. And I would like to finish up uh, by summarizing for you the 
the Mothers of Murphy 3.2 ad that I have sent to Greg Langston and Steve Wilson here locally in Warren and Butler counties. First deposits over $100,000 uh, with a focus on getting them to be EFT donations or tithes uh, would show receipts to prove that 20% of the money went to some of the programs to help better our society in the name of Jesus. Uh, revenue generated by faith-based social causes should not be used for profit or investments in banks. Receipts from churches would be accepted and audited. Uh, U.S. for Hope campaigns in our uh, sports venues uh, and even uh, concert arenas where that we supply the means and sort of have salesman you know ship skills uh, worked on by going out and asking people uh, to donate uh, through EFT transfers on squares or uh, big big pop uh, kettle chain you know in extra change drives and stuff like that uh, to generate money to fight disease homelessness despair and cure things like hate and uh, obscurity being forgotten about in our society. I want people to learn, to live, and to forgive. So I hope that you enjoyed this message. I hope it clarifies some of the questions that I get about the Mothers of Mercy 3.2 Act. I hope that everybody gets together and starts writing their congressmen, writing their senators, and trying to get them to accept this bill, as well as push for a U.S. for Hope Olympics 24 reading of a letter from my 